Biohazard here with this tutorial on brute forcing hash with Hashcat. Hashcat has two versions, a CPU based one, which I'm using for this video, and a GPU based one called OCL Hashcat, which I will be explaining in a further tutorial. So a few great things to mention about Hashcat is that it supports 33 al algorithms, hash algorithms. Um, it works on both Windows and Linux, has a bin for Linux and an executable for Windows. And, um, supports multi-threading which means it can take advantage of multiple cores like this quad core system I'm using right now. Hashcat also claims to be one of the fastest CPU based multi-hash cracking tools out there which I can agree on. With full threads on this quad core I can get anywhere from 24 to 26 million hash attempts a second on a brute force attack. I'll be making a video later on comparing it to other hash cracking applications like Kane and John the Ripper. So let's begin with a demo. I've pulled a list of hashes from Hashkiller, and which I've saved into a text file, conveniently called hash, which I'm going to be brute forcing. So um, open up command prompt and navigate to your Hashcat folder. Okay, time to start the brute force attack. So first thing we need to do is declare what type of attack method we're going to be using, which is brute force. So tag A initiates that you want to what attack to use. And the numerical value given by Hashcat for the brute force attack is 3. So negative A, 3, means you want to perform a brute force attack. Um, then we need to set the hash type, or hash mode. Um, so tag M, followed by 0, which is the numerical value for MD5. Um, which, if you want to find out the other uh, numerical values for the other hash types, just type Hashcat slash tag cli.exe tag tag help and it will list the um, list the other hash types next we need to set the output file so any hashes that are cracked will be put into a text file which I'm going to call cracked simple enough um, and just so this brute force doesn't eat my CPU up I'm going to set it to only one thread that's what tag n stands for is number of threads then we need to set the um, the word length for the uh, word length that the brute force will try. So tac tac bf, declaring that for for the brute force attack, tac pw for password, min equals, and this is where you put the minimum word length. So which I'm gonna just set to two. Tac tac bf, tac pw, tac max equals. This would be the maximum that you want the word length to be, which I'm just going to set to 15. Next, we need to set the character set that we want the uh, brute force attack to use, um, which would be tac tac bf tac cs character set tac buff buf equals, and you could do uh, numeric, which is just numbers, alpha, which would be just letters, or alpha numeric, letters and numbers. But for simplicity, I'm just going to go with numeric. So now we have all the commands typed out. Negative A, 3, meaning we want to use the attack of a brute force. Negative M, 0, meaning we want the hash type is MD5. Negative, zero, negative O, crack.txt, means the output of the hash is going to be put into a text file called crack.txt. Negative N, number of threads is 1. Um, and you got your password, uh, you got your word minimum, word maximum, and then the character set. Now all that's left is to declare the text file that the hashes are stored in, which I have conveniently named hash.txt. So now that's all we need for this brute force attack. So you press enter, and it will begin. As you can see, I only have 6.15 million words a second uh, trying to meet brute force. That's because I limited the threads to one. If I left this to go full power, like I said before, I could get 25, poss possibly 26 million a second. And as you can see, out of this 5,000 um, 5, hash uh, list, I've already cracked 50. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on Hashcat. I plan to be making many more, so just look, look out there.